Welcome to 5-Minute Theory lesson number 21. In this lesson, we're going to learn about dynamics and a couple of ways of changing dynamics, which are the crescendo, decrescendo. And then we're also going to review our musical symbols. So let's start off at the top of the page by writing our name at the top. So the very first thing that you're going to learn is the different dynamic markings that you're going to see in music. And dynamics means how loud or soft relatively that you play. So when I play piano, that means that I'm going to play quiet or soft. Piano is marked with a P. Now, if I go even softer and I play extremely quiet or very soft, I have a pianissimo, which is marked with a double P. Sometimes you'll see it actually keep going. The more P's you add, the softer that the composer wants you to play. So you could have four P's. <laughs> All right, forte means to play loud and it's marked with an F. Fortissimo kind of goes in the same direction, but opposite of piano. If I have more than one F, it just keeps getting louder. So I could have three Fs, I could have four Fs. It gets louder and louder and louder. So piano soft, forte loud, and then in between those two, we have what we call mezzo piano. We say mezzo. It means medium. So if I have a mezzo piano, it means medium soft. It's a little louder than piano, uh, but then when you get to mezzo forte, mezzo forte, the MF, that means medium loud. So you have piano, you have forte, and then in between those two, you have mezzo piano, mezzo forte, medium soft, medium loud. So I can go from the, from the very softest at PPPP all the way up to mezzo piano, mezzo forte, forte, keep going up, fortissimo, fortissimo, all the way up. So all of those dynamics are gonna tell us how loud we can play. When we're in an ensemble, we have to adjust our volume based off of the ensemble. But when you're playing a solo, it's how loud you can play or soft you can play and still make your instrument sound great. Now, two uh, notation symbols that tell you to gradually get louder or gradually get softer are the crescendo. And you're gonna see this with a long parallel lines, not parallel, long lines that almost look like a greater than sign. So I'm getting louder and louder or a decrescendo. Another way of writing that is called a diminuendo. Diminuendo means to gradually get softer. So sometimes you'll see uh, in the music it, it says crescendo. Sometimes you'll, you may see it where it's uh, abbreviated C-R-E-S-C -E period, crescendo. You might see it with the, uh, with the greater than sign or the less than sign for diminuendo. You might see D-E-S-C or D-I-M for getting softer. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna do on this page is draw a dynamic. One dynamic is louder or softer than the first. If you see a louder dynamic at the beginning, you're gonna draw a diminuendo or decrescendo to the second dynamic. If the first dynamic is softer than the second, then you're gonna draw, draw a crescendo. This should be very, very simple. So number two here, forte to piano. Obviously I'm going from loud to soft, so I draw a dimin diminuendo or decrescendo. All right, mezzo forte to mezzo piano, so medium loud to medium soft. I'm doing my diminuendo again. All right, PP, pianissimo to piano. I'm gradually getting louder. Not much louder, but a little louder. And then mezzo forte, medium loud to fortissimo, obviously, getting from mezzo medium loud to very, very loud. And then finally, mezzo piano to pianissimo, I'm getting softer. All right, that's very simple. If you flip over to the back of the page, you'll notice that all we're doing here is just kind of reviewing a bunch of our notation symbols that we use. So on number seven, what means very loud? So forte means loud, but fortissimo 
means very loud. Sometimes you kind of see those Fs connected together. So we can draw a treble clef. Hopefully you remember how to do that. A repeat sign. So remember the repeat sign is actually this one. If I drew it backwards, it would be the, the other side of the repeat sign. You could do it either way, okay? A rest for two beats. What kind of rest gets two beats? A half rest. Remember a half rest looks like a hat. What cancels a sharp or flat? A natural sign. And don't forget you can use these down here just to kind of uh, look at it and see uh, if you can't really remember it and you, and you check, check, check out the bottom here, you can, you can find what you're looking for. What means medium loud? Well, medium is mezzo and then loud is the forte, so medium loud. What lowers a note one half step? Call that a flat sign. What increases a note's value by half? So if I put a dot behind a note, it increases its value. Gradually get louder. I can draw my greater than sign, or I could write in uh, crescendo, okay? Right now I'm just doing the symbols, so you, you write in the uh, greater than sign, right? Two beats in a measure. Uh, what gets two beats in a measure? Oh, if I look down here, two, four time. That's, okay, that's a time signature. Very soft. So soft is one. Very soft is two. Pianissimo. A note that gets four beats. Remember, a whole note gets four beats. What raises a note one half step? A sharp sign, a rest for four beats. So we rested for two beats on number 10. Now we do the opposite. Remember, a whole rest is a box that holds on to the line. What marks the end of a song? Our lovely double bar line. Without the dots, if you put the dots, it'd be a repeat. Rest for one beat. Let's see if you remember how to draw a quarter rest. Remember, it is a Z with a tail. Gradually get softer. That's our less than sign. And a note that gets half of a beat. Okay, you might have to think about that. If you see all the way down here, we have all kinds of stuff. This note right here, what is that called? An eighth note. So we have a, a note head and a stem, and then we have to draw the flag. Not very pretty, but that is an eighth note. All right, so we got all the way through all of those uh, review uh, notation symbols. Hopefully you remembered all of that stuff. Hopefully you could just double check, use my video to double check your answers versus just filling it out with me. All right, if you got that down, we'll go on to the next lesson.